All right, welcome into Tackler Media's YouTube page. We have a Braves MLB insider joining us today. First Braves insider we've ever had um, on the YouTube page, and that is Brian Chandler. And he's joined with by a couple guys that I know through uh, my work and through social media as well. But I'm just now getting introduced to Brian today, and Brian broke the news that Yasil Puig was signing with the Braves a couple days ago. Uh, Brian is is uh, down here in the bottom left, and uh, I'll let him introduce himself. I'll let Matt and Kiever introduce themselves really quickly, too, before we get this conversation started. Brian, you can start us off. Well, obviously, I'm Brian Chandler. I'm now bigger than Ken Rosenthal in height and in fame, probably. He's, he's what, 5'5", five, 5'4"? Five? Five, I think you got him. Yeah, I think you got him. Yeah, yeah you got him. You got him. I mean, I love him, but that's something to be proud of, I think. Yeah, I think so, too. All right. Uh, how about Kiever down there at the bottom? Right? Uh, yeah, that's easy. All right. Well, uh, yeah, I'm Kiever. Thanks for introducing me. I know Wes, Wes covered a little, little bit of my uh, baseball career, I guess, through <laughs> high school. Uh, and uh, Matt, I know Matt through Twitter, but he uh, – Became a good friend of mine down at Georgia Southern. We actually created one of our own podcasts. We need to start up soon. And then Brian, <laughs> I know Brian through Twitter as well, but we've met a couple times at Braves games. Most famously, uh, just randomly in the game, you store yep, one day. twice. We didn't even tell each other, and it, it just happened. I don't know. It's really cool, though. All right, Matt, how about you? I went to Georgia Southern with Kiever, and uh, I know Brian through Twitter, and we all are huge Braves fans. And we we all kind of live tweet through the games, and we really just have a good time with it. And um, me and Kiever have a podcast together. We're really good friends. And I love Brian, too. Brian's on the TL, making me laugh pretty much every day. So that's kind of where we're all coming from. Thanks, Wes, for letting us come on today. We're really, really going to enjoy this, I think. Yeah, what is the name of your podcast? I'll let you go ahead and get a plug in. All right, hey, first and foremost – it's kind of retired right now because uh, me and Kiefer are. We, we opted out. We opted, <laughs> we opted out. out of the uh, 2020 <laughs> podcast season. But it's first and foremost. Uh, we have episodes on SoundCloud and Apple if you want to go back through the back catalog and maybe have a laugh at how dumb we are. So, Very cool. All right. So the reason why, why we are all gathered here today is because Braves Insider Brian. It really rolls off the tongue. Braves Insider Brian. He – saw Yasil Puig uh, at Truist Park at the Battery, and, and I won't take any more of your thunder. Brian, just start to finish. Give your account of what you saw and, and what happened. Well, you know, usually when people walk by you, I don't think you take much notice, but uh, Yasil Puig's not regular. He's a, That's a big man. He has big muscles, nice clothes, the blonde hair. So when you see him, it's like – yeah, that's Yasiel Puig. I mean, there's no no second guessing that, honestly. And I only saw him for like five seconds. He was, I was in front of the hotel. He was walking into his Uber. He got in. That was it. That, that's all I had, like five seconds. He had a mask on too, but you could still see his eyes. And his eyes kind of just say Yasiel Puig. So, yeah. Was he, um, what kind of Uber? I mean, that, that's that's all it took for me to. Oh, I have no idea. It, it could have been an Uber. It could have been a Lyft. These are important got, details, Brian. I, I, I should have looked to see if there was a sticker on the car, honestly. But uh, <laughs> How are we going to trust you without these, you know, important corroborating details? Yeah, I told everyone it was an Uber. If it was a Lyft, then honestly, I'm canceled, I think. <laughs> yeah, you're done, buddy. That that's yeah. Your career was short. That's too important to miss, honestly, yeah. Did he have a uh, a graphic mask? Was there anything on it that that separated it from a normal mask? No, it was just black. So I mean, it didn't stand out. Okay. But well, you know, we just we have to do our due diligence because, um, you know, we're all respectable journalists in this in this meeting right now. So we just have to we have to explore all the facts and and challenge uh, your side of the story because that's that's the journalistic thing to do. But. You know, I, I just wanted to make sure that we had uh, we had everything covered. I want to make sure, you know, it wasn't a, a case of mistaken identity because, you know, these reports have have come out, and I, and I'd hate for it to, I'd hate for you to have to run a correction. 
Oh, yeah. I mean, that's why I said 99% positive because okay. I knew I, it could have been a twin. It could have been a brother, a lookalike. Yeah. You never know. And there was actually someone on Twitter that was saying, like, what if Mark Feinstein, or whatever it is, I think it's Mark Feinstein. I think I don't want to butcher that. But uh, he had a, he was the first to post it. And there was somebody in the comments like, what if Mark just saw Brian's tweet and he was like, oh, this guy must be right. Let me break the news. Yeah, Yasiel Puig's not even a brave. Everybody just thinks so. So that'd be a funny story if that happened. I think I'd also get canceled for that. Yeah. Well, I ran the- through my mind. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was like an hour, hour, two minutes after I tweeted that. I thought, okay, you know, I, I'll tweet this out, wait a few days. No, it's like I got done eating lunch two minutes later, <laughs> breaking news. I was shocked. Because we don't want another repeat of the uh, the Kimbrel in the airport situation yeah, from last yeah, spring right. training. Mm-hmm, that's what uh, I was thinking about. That awkward picture of him standing waiting for his luggage, that was like Kimbrel to the Braves confirmed. And then we had other Twitter accounts tweet, just heard some good news. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was not good news. He signed with the Cubs. Yeah, that's – that's what this made me think of. And uh, I don't – look, I, I'm a blue check guy. I was silenced last night. I couldn't talk. I couldn't, I couldn't, <laughs> right. I couldn't tweet. We were running laps around you last night. Right. I know, yeah. dude. I've got to make up for it. I've got to, I've got to tweet extra today to make up for it. But, but I don't care about that. You know, I, I, if you have an account, if you're a, a fan and you have an account and you see something like that, I'm not just going to not agree with you or, or not believe you just because you're not a reporter. And I think that's kind of a problem these days is there's like that uh, line in the sand of like, I'm the verified journalist. I'm the only one that can report this fact. I love, I love that you broke the news. I think that's super cool. Yeah. But now I can tell you've gotten a little bit of the mystique about you. I, I bet you've already applied for a blue check, haven't you? I would like that. <laughs> I, I don't know how you go about that, but I mean, if they want to give me that, I'll take it. Yeah. I mean, you're you're a certified Braves insider. Well, to just to speak on that, I love the uh, connection that um, the Braves Nation has created, and, and all you guys know each other because of that, um, in one way or another. It, it makes me think of in Atlanta with Hawks fans. There was a group that would always go to every game, home game, and they're called the Hawks Bros. And I think y'all are cooler than that because it obviously the Braves fandom stretches so regionally. Like Brian, you live in North Carolina. Um, Matt and Kiever grew up in, in different parts of Georgia. Um, so can you guys just kind of explain what that's like to, to be so tight, even though, you know, you don't always have a personal relationship with each other and you guys can just take turns, um, answering that one. Well, I think it's crazy because a lot of these guys, they do know each other. Some of them do from like maybe college or something, but I didn't know any of these guys. I've, I'm, friends with so many people a lot of close friends from twitter but i didn't have any connections whatsoever i i started twitter when i was 14 which so that crazy for me is that i become so good friends with people i just never knew in any way i'll pick up on that and uh yeah i you know just getting on twitter you think it's just you're gonna get i don't know some people get on for different things news that's where i get my news really twitter it's dangerous uh, probably the fastest it's yeah but (laughs) I, I agree. It definitely is. I don't, I, I'm not one to believe the first thing I hear anyway, but um, yeah, you, you start making friends online and then in like in a case, like with me and Matt, we're like great friends now. He's probably going to be in my wedding. I'm sure he, it's just, but uh, it, it's just crazy that that started on Twitter. And then now we, we talk every day. I mean, we, I talk every day with Brian just through a group chat and everything, a few group chats actually, but yeah. And we, talk every day one one of a good friend of mine and that I don't know it's just weird that just one common denominator brave wouldn't know these that's just a cool way to think about it yeah definitely um I didn't I didn't even really use Twitter as a way to connect with people until the Braves um for me it was definitely like just somewhere where I would just get my thoughts off there was really no other thing to it until I started connecting with these guys mainly Um, And I think it speaks a lot to the regional aspect of the Braves to where, you know, the Dodgers probably have fans everywhere. The Cubs probably have fans everywhere. But for the Braves, it's really like the South is still very much Braves country. And, you know, through TBS and now through Twitter, 
uh, I would say the Braves probably have one of the most expansive fan bases on social media. And, you know, even other people from other fan bases say, you know, Braves Twitter is top notch because of that, because it's all different kinds of people come from all different places. And we all just, we like to joke about Nick Markakis and uh, yeah. Luke Jackson. So I really got through it. So uh, one thing that came out of Braves Twitter last year was obviously the Tiger Woods meme. And I'm just curious, you know, you guys don't have to divulge anything right now. Is there a new Tiger Woods-esque meme in the works? Or is Tiger Woods just kind of, is he here to stay until something else uh, forces a, a change to a different meme? Can we expect something new in, in 2020 once the season starts? We uh, hope we don't have yeah. to resort to it. Yeah, yeah we, we don't hope. want because, we don't want that meme to come back. It, it's, because it's 2019, and we start like that started after the opening series sweep in Philadelphia, you know, and after that it just it became the big the big thing, and, and we were trolling other teams' accounts with it, and that was yeah. I don't know. That was the best part to me. It was so organic too. Like it, it wasn't. Some somebody spamming the other accounts, so we can't really tell if something new is going to come up because that was just so spontaneous. It was too good. Yeah, I think that if like the 2020 season could start, it could be two weeks in, nothing's going on, and then a big game happens, somebody posts something, and boom, that's the meme. It's yeah. that that easy. It's just we, we don't want it to be made. We want it to be natural. Yeah, that was the best thing about it that, that Kiever pointed out. It started out after a low point in the season, and it really became, early. yeah, Very early. yeah. It, yeah. and it became something like, if not positive, at least lighthearted and and funny. And it wasn't it wasn't as negative as it originally started out to be. Um, the the other thing that I love about you guys as as hashtag Braves Twitter is you're very objective. And you're not you're not the fan base that is looking through rose colored glasses, and I think that's a byproduct of some of the unfortunate low points that the club has been through. Um, but I do love that, and it makes y'all easy. I think it you know it lends itself to reports like Brian's. Like I, I'm not gonna see this through rose colored glasses and just assume that this guy saw somebody that looks like Yasiel Puig and he's gonna report it because that's what he wanted to see. It, it adds a level of credibility to what you guys are saying. So I think you guys have a, a valid take on how this season uh, could go and uh, maybe will go. So I just want to get your thoughts individually on the club right now, um, some moves you'd like to see, just whatever your, your general thoughts are about the club and the direction it's headed in 2020 in this really weird season. Well, obviously we really want sports. Everyone does, but uh, obviously the thing with Freddie Freeman right now, it's but I think more, most importantly, we just want the players to be safe. Yep. We, we, we trust that this protocol is going to work. We, tr we trust that baseball is going to be safe, basically. I mean, we don't know what's going to happen. We hope a season happens, but we just want people to be safe. That's, that's the big thing. And if we do play, I mean, this, I mean, I, I agree with Ryan, first of all. I think so the player safety comes first. Working with the football team down at Georgia Southern, I, I, I mean, we're going to have 120 guys down there at one time on the field during practice. And that's, I mean, that's, it's, I, I mean, it raises some eyebrows, but it, it can be done. I hope it gets done and I hope the players take it seriously. But if the Braves do, like, if the season does happen, I could see us, it's, it's a tough division, though, you know. Yeah, it's gonna be a tough division. Uh, we could definitely win it. I mean, coming in fourth, I don't think we will, but yeah. I could see it. Well, last year uh, after sixty games, the the Phillies, I think, I think the Phillies would have won the division. Either that I think or that's a, right. Yeah, it was either that or a tie. And obviously, the Phillies didn't finish so hot. So, and then right. the, the Pirates, I think, were almost a playoff team after <laughs> sixty games. Yeah. So yeah. Obviously, the Pirates aren't very good. So. The Mariners start off well every year too, so mm -hmm. we'll see what happens there. Yep. Yeah, the uh, it's always says 
they always say it's a marathon, not a sprint. But like this year, it's like who can keep the sixty or the the players hot for sixty games. So uh, I would say that the Braves have a really good chance to do that because this year, unlike in previous years, this is all. First of all, this is all contingent on if they play, but they have a strong bullpen and they have enough starting pitching. And I mean, I would I would take the Braves lineup with pretty much anyone in baseball right now. Um, so. I'm hoping that it's all about whether you get off the tracks or if you get off to a good start or if you stumble at the start. So that's really the – as far as baseball goes, that's really what we have to look at here. And I, um, I also just want to point out, I read something. Uh, a five-game losing streak is essentially a 13-game losing streak in a full season. So yeah. a five-game losing streak, you could be done. I mean, mm-hmm. it's that quick. You start 0-5, I mean, good luck. Yeah, because, yep. yeah. Well, be, I mean – Yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, because, like, I think the Braves had a streak where they – what was the longest win streak last year? Was it nine or ten games? I think yeah. it was, like, nine, yeah. It, it wasn't super long, no. They, they didn't have, like, a like a crazy win streak that's, that stood out uh, in the middle of the season. It was just, you know, they, they'd go make some hot strides like that and then – go on a little bit of a losing streak from time to time, but then they, they always corrected themselves. That was the encouraging thing about them last year. Right. So it's hard to do that over 60 games, but hopefully it'll turn out in our favor. It just – it remains to be seen. Yeah. I think um, the one interesting thing I've heard this week as as baseball relates to the rest of sports as a whole, Greg Sankey in the SEC is watching Major League Baseball specifically to see how its restart goes – because Major League Baseball is not in a bubble. You can't watch the NBA. You can't watch Major League Soccer and compare those things because they are in a bubble, and there's no way that college football can operate within a bubble. To your point, Kiever, there's just too many players. There's too many people. So I'm excited slash curious to see how the restart goes for Major League Baseball because it potentially has implications on college football as well. Um, So, guys, I, I really appreciate your time. I know you all have... Other things you need to be getting back to. Brian, I will tell you, man, just stay stay posted up at Truist and continue to uh, keep a watch out, man. You, you've got this knack for identifying people with their masks on. Um, maybe not the best knack of uh, differentiated between Ubers and Lyfts. I'm not going to, to turn to you on, on that, but I will, um, I'll trust you, man. If you got Braves news, hit me up and let me know. Matt and Kiever, Great to talk to you guys. Hope you all have a great rest of your summer and hope everything goes well for y'all and, and for you as well, Brian. Subscribe to uh, tacklermedia.com. A lot more content like this from the fans themselves. And, uh, you know, I, I tweeted earlier today, we know that there's there's not a guarantee that sports could happen this year, but for people like me, for fans like you, this is what we talk about. You know, we can't, it's a reflex. We can't help but talk about it. So, Appreciate y'all joining me, and um, I'll talk to y'all again soon. Yes, sir. Thank you. Appreciate it. Take care, fellas.